Welcome back to Engineers. Go to the website, engineers.com. Great platform, community, all of that great stuff. Speaking of engineers, this, this has been the panel we've been waiting for pretty much all weekend. Shout out to everybody that's hit this stage. Um, but this one is a big one for us. Um, well, first and foremost, uh, Mix Bali, make some noise for Mix Bali. <laughs> created this platform. Jason Joshua, goddammit. Soundwave. Yo, yo. Fabian. Oh, no, no drum roll, bro. <laughs> we missed the Rocky music, man. Damn. <laughs> What's up? What's up? Hey, listen, uh, this, one is a, this one is a special one. First of all, fuck it, make some more, make some more noise for these gentlemen up here. Um, I just want to say, me personally, it's, it's dope to even be in the same arena, camaraderie with these gentlemen. Uh, me and Ali go back almost 20, Soundwave about 15, same. Jason, you probably don't remember, but you used to mix all our shit when we was with Cash Money, me and G, me and Glasses. Fabian's a fucking legend. So I feel like this is going to be a great one. I definitely want to, I don't want to rush anything, but I know that these people have been waiting three days to get questions in. So I want to leave you a little bit of time at the end. If everybody asked their questions, they've been taking notes, writing shit down. Uh, can y'all make sure your mics are on? Just yo, push yo. the little thing up. Yo, 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 Give yo, yo, a mic yo, yo. check real quick. C, C. Hello? Can we C. get Jason's up a little bit? C, there. C. Turn Jason's C. C. Can we get C. 20, 20, 20. <laughs> 20. <laughs> Who used this mic last? <laughs> they be critiquing the fuck out of the mix right now. Um, but yeah, Ali, you want to say anything before I get started? Uh, man, this is incredible, man. I mean, shit, we got fucking uh, how many billions of streams is up here right now? You know what I'm saying? Uh, nah, you I'm mean Jason, right? Mean Jason. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but it's, I mean, just for somebody, I, again, Soundwave, my brother, y'all know we go back like four flats, but, you know, from, from Fabian to Jason, you know, people that I definitely looked up into in the, you know, as I was on my journey to becoming an audio engineer to, you know, to be here with them, definitely being able to show my gratitude to these guys, um, you know, man, it's just, you know, it's his family, you know, I'm just excited to be here. Thank you for having us, man. Man, I want to start with, actually, we'll start with Jason. Are you ready? Whatever, we'll start with. I want to start with Fabian as far as like um, your beginnings, not necessarily your origin story. We, everybody knows they've done their Googles, they've done their homework. Uh -huh. But what I want to talk about is your, your decision to become who you are because I remember um, Ali 15, 20 years ago talking about he's going to carve a lane out for this craft, for engineering. Right. Um, and it's not something that's glorified. It's not on the award shows and right. shit like that. He's gonna make sure that he changes that. Of course. Uh, but We're here, look. I mean, look around. Jesus, <laughs> this is crazy. Man. But your decision to, to play that role in the game, though. For sure. Well, you know, I grew up. My father was a singer. God bless. He passed away a couple years ago. So I was um, always bless. engineering and doing his shows and things like that. But I hated live music. And no disrespect to anybody that does it here, but it, it wasn't for me. I wanted to be in the studio. So I figured out, okay, can I do this? Can I still be involved with music and do another way? And you know, I was a kid. I'm 12 years old. You know what I mean? So then I decided to go and you know, get on to that end of things. And then I went full sail down in Orlando. And then, um, yeah, then I got my job at the Hit Factory in New York and started banging through it. You know, I always love sound. Like, I, I, the point of talking about my dad was, I, I knew that side of the business, watching my dad do it, you know what I mean? But I never wanted to be that person. I always wanted, like, I hate attention. I, like, I'm awkward, you could tell. Like, I'm sitting up here, I feel uncomfortable, you know? So I'm like, what can I do to be in this? And I'm a nerd, like I want to be behind the scenes, you know what I mean? So then I, I learned about more about engineering. I'm like, oh shit, I can still be involved, make music, make a living, support my family, and I don't have to, nobody, nobody has to know who I am. I could be behind the scenes. So that's, that's really where I honed in on engineering. That was, that was my choice to do it at that point. That's, that's dope. Um, Mr. Jason Joshua, Ooh you are a lot hold, of people. Hold on, before, Go ahead. I just want to tell everybody, and this is not Jason, we know Jason, but. If you don't have the, I called Jason the first day I heard the God particle. <laughs> I called him on his phone. I don't know if you remember this. I remember. And I said, yo, I haven't changed my stereo bus in 15 years. Today I changed my stereo bus. So if you don't have the God particle, and I'm not, this is not a sponsored thing, go get the God particle. You're playing yourself if you don't have it. I just wanted to say that. I think every last interrupt. person in here has had that in their chain. That's am I right? Am I right? Make some noise if you sledding that God particle. That's up. what I'm saying. If you don't, if you don't, you're playing yourself. Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're you good. You're you know? good. For sure. Um, I just want to know just something I never had the chance to ask before. You're a lot of people's barometer when it comes to this, this whole shit that, we, that engineering is, right? Um, mixing, 
recording, whatever it is, what's your, what's your barometer? Like, is there anybody that you were looking at coming up? Is there anything that you pulled in, anybody that you pulled inspiration from? I mean, my whole life is revolves around one man, and that's the, everyone knows that. That's Dave Pensado. Without Dave Pensado, I would not even remotely be doing any any of this. But I'm different, man. No, I never really was like studied a cat. I studied the cats that were that I was competing against. You know, the the the, the cats that were taking my mixes. <laughs> so sorry, man. So no, never, never, never apologize because still. <laughs> sharp and still like a lot of people don't understand all of us on this stage have lost the mix or lost the client or lost it just it, it to, each other. To, to each other to each other <laughs> they definitely then, filter through these three motherfuckers up here for, for and a fact sure. and then they'll i hate jason i fucking hate <laughs> jason man but what you what you got to realize is you got to sometimes take a step back and ask yourself why and i remember i'll never forget i forgot who told me what 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 did you used to use on your 808s the uh what was the it? lo -fi? No, 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 no. You back back when we were all dug in it in the analog oh, world. The one twenty, bro. I don't know what it was. Uh, I thought it was. I think I, it's called a Neve. It might have been a Neve. I I had the stressors going. I had the little fat whatever the fuck. Oh, the fat. So it is. I had every fucking thing on. I was like, I cannot get my 808s to sound like this motherfucker. <laughs> what was it? What was it uh, on a milli? What, what what record was it? Every last one of them <laughs> yeah, that I wasn't getting. <laughs> <laughs> it was the Neve, man. It, it wasn't me. It was the board. It wasn't so, yeah, me, so I never really studied the, the, the older cats. I studied the cats that was getting it. You know what I mean? The, the older cats, you know, it, it's Fabian will tell you, like, when you're in this long enough, you'll see everything happen to you 10, 20 times over. But what you won't see is that new motherfucker come on the scene yeah. with some shit, and you better pay attention, right. or else he's gonna light your ass up. Yeah. Um, Soundwave, I wanna talk, I, I've been waiting to talk to you, but I wanna talk yeah. about- I, I always wanted to do this, Soundwave! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wizzo! Um, they don't know about the Wizzo. Between, between you and Ali, like, between the both of y'all, if, if you just put y'all together, y'all are responsible for a whole generation of sound at this point. Respect, respect. Um, I want to talk about because Ali always talked about how he would take the liberty and go in with Kendrick's vocals and just start fucking with shit and just start moving shit. Um, has there ever been a time when you was making crafting sound where you heard something and either he fucked with it or somebody else fucked with it and you had to go in and be like, nah, I intended it for it to be this way? And then also talk about crafting that sound. I'm going to tell you right now, Ali hates my guts when it comes to fouls because my fouls look like Tetris to where it makes no sense. And so every time <laughs> I put something in there, he starts from zero. So he will literally mute everything. But when he does that, 50% of the record is like missing. So I'm like, bro, like, where's my strings? Where's it's my- It's a dirty ass session. You got layers and layers and layers of strings and drums that he's not using no more. He forgot to delete, it's all type <laughs> of shit. I'm a big layer. Like, if you know me, like, I would tuck a kick in a kick. And it makes sense to me. But I have to understand his brain that like it's a different system, and it kind of makes sense. So us working together was like perfect, perfect match. But when you, you, you when you say you tuck a kick in a kick, do, don't you have to do some EQ to that? A hundred percent. Like all my EQs is the basic EQs because I got this man right here, so I'm not gonna stretch it. So if I have like a light kick that just I want to hear that kick, but I have another kick that I want to feel, right. I do that for a reason. And what, Ali what the, is that, the, he's that's the actually expert. funny as shit though. <laughs> yeah, facts, facts. Because how many engineers are here? How many fucking times have you started a mix? And you know how we do. We starting with the kick and the snare or whatever the hell we starting yeah. with. And all of a sudden they're like, where's my bongos? <laughs> <laughs> Not the bongo though. <laughs> that's a fact. Every, every but there's, time. there's like with, with Soundway, the way it produces, which actually just taught me a lot with just like the imperfections of like music creation, right? Like sometimes everything is not meant to be clean, right. you know, where it'll be a drum loop or something that you might be using and like the blip of the, the sample cut adds to like the emotion of like what's driving the record, you know? So, you know, it was a point in time, like, like Wiz was saying, I'll go through, clean it up and clip gain or, uh, you know, uh, clip silence everything and get everything cleaned up. But then I'm missing the breath of air that was intended to add some emotion or add some energy or, you know, like a blip in the sample cut 
that you know it might if you have it soloed right you might sound like it's not supposed to be there but in context of the relation of the whole mix it actually was a major driver in just the feeling so i learned a lot with just the way he ch chops up samples and just paying attention to it's really paying attention because his sessions always came to me fucked up I had to make sure that I didn't delete nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I had to make sure this nigga wasn't calling me cuz him yell. Like, where the fuck my bongos at? <laughs> nah, but eventually, like, the more we worked together, the more we understood it, each other's process to the point where I don't even got to be there no more. Like, he knows me, and I know him, so if I send him a record, it's going to come back 100% the way I want it to sound. So. I, th I think that's all just great engineers. I can imagine both of you guys, right, when it comes to clients that you've worked with for a long time, right, you know what they want. You know, so where they're not showing up to the session, tapping on your shoulder, like, oh, what are you doing, right? You know, I think as an engineer, it's okay. Uh, it's good to get that, uh, that freedom from the artist you're working with, you know, because that's when the creativity really sparks, you know? I want to talk about um, mixing different genres, different sounds, different frequencies. Um, we, we talked about a, lo a lot about uh, mixing R&B, mixing vocals, mm -hmm. but I want to talk about mixing the actual stacks, like with to Wave's point, like kicks inside of kicks and the 808 frequencies and stuff like that. As far as mixing that, is there a, is there a process that you go through to figure out what you're gonna do first? Because I know you start low end, but yeah. I mean, it might be the kick, might be the 808, might be a bass, like. You know, it's, I could, when, I mean, I could, you guys will probably, it's, I take the romance out of mixing, right? Anytime I do an interview, they're like, you, you, you know, you don't make me feel sexy, this and that. I've mixed every, say, and I'm, I'm sure everybody on this stage has mixed every fucking kick, snare that is in existence. Every 808 that exists, I've seen it already. So when it comes to me, like you can pick it apart, but as soon as I open up the session, I mean, I can mix a song in 15 minutes. You know what I mean? If uh, don't, you know, my universe, my friend, you know, that's not, don't make the budget do that. But, um, <laughs> but I'm saying like, like, you know, when, you, when I open up a song, it's like I already know what I'm gonna do because I've heard this all. But then, then that's when you gotta listen to the song. What does it mean in there? You know what I mean? So my start is always, okay, pick it apart. I hear it, okay, I know that's kick, this and that, but then I start, then you gotta listen to the song, okay, why, and kind of echoing what Ali just said, why is it there, what's happening, you know, wh wh what's it bringing out on the other part, or is it a mistake, do I need to fix it? You know, th that's, that's kind of always my process at the beginning, the, hear the song, vibe with it for a second, and then dive in. Yeah. Um, I, go, I go think ahead. if I can speak on that, I think it's just most, uh, me, me personally, it's, Nowadays, right, you know, this the, the demo itis is a real thing. I'm sure you oh, all yeah. deal with the shit. Uh, and their demos are getting worse, man. The demos are getting worse. It's like I, you know, I might just send it back how they sent it to me, and they get it out. But you know, there's you know, there's there's in my personal experience. There's two type of like, <laughs> like artists that I work Yo, with. I just got that, and that is fucking amazing. Uh, <laughs> That's two, my sentiments exactly. <laughs> there's two type of like artists, right? You have the artists that understand just the, the process, right? Of you busting a song down, mixing analog, really spending time with you know, crafting the sound, and there's ones that you really follow the reference, right, you know? Right. At the end of the day, you know, as engineers, we're tools, right, to, you know, take the artist's vision to the next level. And sometimes, you know, they might have their sonic vision already buttoned up, right? It just needs a little bit of cleaning up, you know? So it's just, again, using your ears and obviously just having that creative, you know, conversation with the artist you're working with, like, yo, how, you know what I'm saying, how deep should I get with this mix, if that makes sense? And sometimes educating the artist, too. 100%. Like, I got a note today, hey, can you, I, I just need the vocals to be a little louder, but, and, then, and then also if you could get the music to be a little louder, and then I think just maybe the drums need to be a little louder. I was <laughs> like, okay, so turn the bass down? You know what I mean, because that's the only thing that's left. You know, but it's also, you, you gotta educate, you know what I mean? That's part of our job too, is educating the client, you know? Right. Humbly, uh, humbly, humbly. Sometimes. Not Jason, but humbly for the rest of us. <laughs> Jason, you're, you're very outspoken when it comes to certain things. Uh, I wanted to ask you about, <laughs> it's, it's been a big hot topic uh, as far as like the AI things and stuff like that. Engineers is a platform that's primarily geared towards assisting. It's you move, using uh, technology as a tool to aid in, in what you guys do in the craft, because it's an art. I believe it's an art, just like producing, DJing, rapping, it's a skill set, right? But where do you stand on, on that, on the, on the whole technology? Because I feel like a lot of people embrace technology, but a lot of the old guard and these old people kind of be like, ah, fuck technology, fuck engineers, fuck what you guys are doing. Where do you stand on, on technological advances in, in your craft? I mean, technology is our friend. Technology is the, 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 it's the main reason why a lot of us are excelling and I, I guess you can say the people who don't believe in the technology are not. I mean, I've, I was taught by my, uh, my mentor Dave to bring every bullet and every gun and every possible thing you can to the fight because 
you don't know what you're going to need at what particular time. So with this AI, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by it. You know what I mean? I, I, I come from a person who was 100% uh, analog and then slowly became a hybrid mixer, then to developing something that helped me go entirely in the box and feel heavier than I've ever been. Um, and I can't even take all the credit for that. I just knew I had an idea and uh, found some guys who knew how to put some zeros and ones together. And you realize very quick dealing with these developers that a lot of these plugins, 90% of these plugin companies are trying to make digital versions of what's already out there. Instead of going to someone like a Fabian or going to someone like Ali or myself and saying, if you can invent anything, what would it be? And that's what day and age we're in with these plugins is that we can literally sit there and say, you know what? I, I remember using the DBX160X so many times, but the, the, a couple of times when I tried to use it, the, the attack wasn't fast enough or it was too fast or, or I wanted to change the release times on something that doesn't even have a release time like a Fairchild. You can do whatever your mind thinks of. So yes, I am a huge, huge advocate with AI, Magnum PI, anything. Uh, well, yeah. so, I was asking that because a lot of, like, I guess the God particle would be something that's comparable, right? A tool in, in the toolbox, not, not necessarily in a lieu of what you do, right? Well, no, it's, uh, for, for me, it was something created where it helped the people who needed it the most, you know? Us top guys, I don't care what Fabian tells you, you could put him in with four plugins, he's still going to have his ear take him to where the mix needs to be. Same with Ali, he can give him a whole new set of plugins, his ear is gonna take him where he needs to be. The problem was is that the younger generation didn't have that point of reference. I, I call Ali's generation like the last of the Mohicans. Yeah, that's real. Like I really feel Ali's generation of mixers are the last of the super mixer. And the unfortunate thing is, the fortunate thing is, is there's a lot of people blowing up off of all this social media, but they're taking their homie with them. And their homie's rough mix. And everyone gets used to the homie's rough mix. But it's not the homie's fault, because the homie's just doing what he's supposed to do. You know what I mean? He's in the studio, he's just trying to make the best mix possible. So how do you help them become at least playing in a field or a genre, because you know, I would lose to rough mixes that were like 20 dB lower than my mix. It would be the most strangest sounding mix in the world, and you would like, there's no way I could lose other than demoitis. Right. So how do I stop these demos from being so bad? And that's why the God Particle was created. Right. And, I, and I, I think I want to know just like what she's created when, when it comes to that plug in general, right? You know, I think. You know, I, I've been vocal about just issues in the game when it comes to, you know, plug-in creation for some time now because it's now, there's not too many creatives that are making these tools that are actually aiding rather than just handicapping. You get what I'm saying? Like, everything is being catered to handicapping the community and, you know, eliminating to a certain extent what our fucking craft is, right? And I commend, like, you know, guys like Jason and people that are developing these tools to help aid you rather than, you know, handica you know handicapping you. So, you know, uh, you know, what you guys are doing with the God, God Particle, man, is, you know, I, again, I would say about 99% of the sessions that I get, you know what I'm saying? I go to the master chain, I see it there, and it's, it's good to see. It's affirming, you know what I'm saying? It's right. affirming that motherfuckers are taking that initiative, right? to keep music at a and, standard. And you know that's, what the, we that's the thing, yeah, that's the thing that I really paid attention to. Like, they want to learn. They, they want, want to, to know. Learn, right. They, they, yeah. how many sessions you've been in when they brought in the homie engineer into the session? Right, yeah. And he's sitting there like, oh man, I don't, right. don't want to be here. Right. I, don't, I don't mean <laughs> to disrespect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> keep making me stay yeah, here. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's uh, 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 an amazing, an amazing thing that was made by a bunch of, of amazing people. But the main thing in my heart behind it, and I kid you not, has nothing to do, because I, I, I plan on being out the game in two years. And, so rich, and, Jason's so rich, man. And, so and, with, <laughs> and with that being said, it would, it would, my legacy would be complete if the next kid who became that next cat, or whoever the case may be, was like, yo, 
it was the God particle that got my ear to understand, oh, the input needs to be here, the bass needs to be sorted here, the mid-range is supposed to be here, and the high end's here. Oh, and that's Jay's curve. So I'm training my ear to Jay, but then now I have the ability with God particle 2 to go to my good friend Fabian and go, Fabian, I need to study your curve. Can we? Can, That's can, gonna be expensive, man. That's gonna be so. Oh, I, I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> I look forward to it. There's a lot of rich talk on the stage, hey, right? Man, listen, <laughs> no, but listen. The point that a lot of younger people, like for, like Jason, made a great point, and I want to hammer on it. Like, I was talking to these two young men earlier, and they were like, you know, we wanna we wanna level up. We wanna do this. I said, well, who's your favorite mixer? And it was like, I was like, well, what are we even talking about? What are you who are you studying? What do you want to get better? Like, what do we what do we even have to say? They don't have that reference point. So yeah. You need that. You, I mean, you're looking at three of them, four of them here, but it's like, who is the reference point? You know, you need to study. And you're not, st like, listen, somebody got more followers than me, that's great. They don't got more money than me. They don't got more hits than me. It's, it's a not lot about of rich social talk media. On the stage, no, I'm saying they no, don't have, it's not about, it's not, I'm just saying they don't have, <laughs> just be, like, don't get fooled by social media, man. You know what I'm saying? Right, just because right. somebody's in the NBA doesn't mean Do you, they really Don't you have a million followers, uh, Ali? No, nah, I, I got a, I got my shit's low. I got about yeah. 150, 180. Yeah, I bought yeah, my check. I bought it. I'm just so everybody knows. Hey, I Fabian, bought my feel away. Can I everybody follow Fabian, please? Would everybody, I he bought feels my check. Away right now. I was verified March 23. Yeah. He said anybody was wondering. I'm just so you. Know. Right. But but to add, to, to, oh, add on, to add on to Fabian's point though is like you know when it comes to like oh studying the people that you look up to like that's how I got in the game, bro. I was studying definitely Fabian. I'm studying the Dre's. I'm studying, you know, the Jasons and just understanding, you know, what that, that what are they doing that I can add to my own arsenal of creativity, right? Um, and I think what Jason is doing with the God part of it, leaving that behind for for his legacy, right? It's like that is literally, you know, a piece of him that is being left on the next generation of music. You know what I'm saying? Which is legacy, man. You know, we should be in this for the legacy plays, man. I think everybody on in, on this stage is. You know, and all that. I just want to ask, what's like, man, if you can't talk about it, what's next for the God Particle? Like, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, yeah, you God said Particle God too. Particle too. I'm, I'm hearing things. We need, we need a mixed body <laughs> uh, 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 God Particle, man. I need, I need something. We're definitely going to have uh, a plethora of uh, plethora. of my my friends and, and peers and their and their curves, because that's what it's all about. It's, right. it's, it's all about going to Fabian and having the team study him and understand it and make the plugin work best for him and for his people and his disciples. But the great, the great thing about this next update is everything that you can think of, excuse me, everything that you can think of has been thought of. Like um, I tell people all the time, this was not a plugin to, to set it and forget it. You want it to continuously to evolve um, and and the things that I'm most proud of probably is the upsampling. It actually changed. I didn't know how valuable that was until we finally cracked the code. Um, so the upsampling just takes it to a whole entire new level. But I think that's going to come out before the God Particle 2. Um, the other one is just understanding and listening to people understanding that they wish they had thresholds and attack times and all that kind of good stuff um, and hearing what they have to say and putting in it and implementing it so it becomes a better plugin every time it gets re-released. But you know, the, 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 the main issue is you can go up and it's not going to just be, a, um, what do you say, it's not just going to be engineers, it's going to be producers as well. So you'll have Mike Will's curve. You have uh, Calvin Harris's curve. You have Dr. Luke's curve. Whoever I worked with, will study, will put it together, will analyze, and that curve will be in there. That's crazy, Good man. Stuff. Shout out, man. Clap it up for Jason and the work he's doing, man. Um, thank you. That's crazy. Thank you for giving us that too, by the way. Um, Wave, I wanted to. I want to ask you some. Yeah, who are we giving that away to? Who's getting it? I mean, I, I wanted to after this. After how this, many? How many you need? I mean, where, who, who who doesn't have God particle? <laughs> Oh wow! I thought you all had it. Come on, man. Trying to sell it. They, hey, <laughs> they second-handed that motherfucker on Craigslist, Jason. I'm telling you. Chase is giving it to everybody here today. <laughs> Look under your seat. Nah, that's no. uh, that's that's definitely uh, after this we want to do a raffle giveaway. Man, head if we can get those tickets together. Uh, we got um uh, about a hundred NFR licenses from Avid. If you don't have Pro Tools, uh, as well as you know Jason and his team is whatever, giving us whatever some. Ali needs. Come on, hey. Meet me around the back. I got him for $5. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, we're going to do a raffle after this, so stick around. Um, real quick, is there any producers? Raise your hand in producers. 
All right, all right, raise your hand if you in FL studio. Uh, all right. Why? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm laughing. <laughs> uh, Soundwave, I want to talk to you about about that aspect. I know you was a, or are you still in FL right now? No, uh, NPC. NPC. Um, so, Old school, baby. So I want to talk so about much. your production workflow being, because uh, uh, we've been talking a lot of engineers to their workflow as far as how they side chain, how they bust, whatever, right? From a production standpoint, what's your workflow like when you are producing without an artist versus when you're in the studio cooking with an artist? Uh, when I'm without an artist, I'm the weirdest person you can ever think of. Like, I will put, I remember my first beat CD that I ever made, my first beat, I had Chris Tucker in there, I had hydraulics in it. <laughs> like, any sound that I like, I threw it in a beat. And I'm still like that. I just, it's moderate level. So I just love to make things that I will actually, like, inspire myself to make. And when I'm with the artist, I try to bring that element there. But if the artist is there, like, basically, like, oh, I have a specific sound, I will start off creating that specific sound. And then once that sound is created and the artist actually likes it, I start to sneak weird sounds in there to the point where it's unique and different from everything else that I hear. And 99.9% .9 of the time, the artist is like, oh, what is that? Oh, that's kind of nice. I'm like, bro, that's what I started off with, but she wasn't trying to hear it, but you know. Shit is be random as hell. I'm getting a session and I'm not muting everything. I'm hearing babies fighting in the background. Uh, <laughs> like it's it all type weird, of, bro. it's all I type of random. You know? Robots transforming as a, it's crazy. <laughs> but it's part of the genius, man. Um, so when you, when you are cooking with an artist, um, obviously everybody knows like Kendrick and all of that stuff, but when you are cooking with an artist, is there anything that because you're the weird person, I guess, in the room. Is there anything that's ever happened where you're in the studio and somebody tells you to put some weird shit in there and it kind of throws you off? Uh, Kendrick is the number one. Like, his brain is like an alien to me. It's like, he will come in and I will be making just like some normal chords and all of a sudden he was like, yeah, but what if there was a moment where there was no music at all for like a good 30 seconds? <laughs> and I'm like, bro, that makes no sense. Like, there's no tempo here. He was like, nah, just trust me. And if you do it, it makes sense. All of a sudden, it becomes the main part. Like, for instance, the um, future part on um, King's Dead. King's Dead. King's Dead, yeah. All Kendrick idea to drop out the la di da di da At first, it was just all the way through the beat, no dropout. And it was Wait, 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 go back. You said where? That's the yeah. whole song. That's the whole <laughs> song. He okay. was just like, what if we just dropped out that whole part? And when he did it, I was like, oh. So that the, so sense. his decision was his decision is to drop out everything that's like weird when it comes to like vocalizing and like weird dropouts in the triple doubles that goes and fade ins and outs. That's just Kendrick's mindset to just try to be as weird as possible. Because I was talking, I remember talking to I think I was talking to Reason or somebody. He was explaining to me like Kendrick's idea when you guys when when you working on like the Black Panther soundtrack, right? And he was like, Yo, what if there's like a siren that come out of nowhere right here? 100%. And it's like, what? Is that, is that, 100%. it's, it's okay. all texture, man. You know what I'm saying? All those, like in the moment of a song, it's emotion. It's, it's creating, it's like a, I think of a song as a canvas, right? You know what I'm saying? Or, or a movie scene or just anything like that, right? It's, these are all experiences that are being carved out of the song to make you, you know, remember it or to make you feel something at that moment. You know what I'm saying? That's, working with him is that feeling of really looking at the vocal as an instrument came from it, right? Doing all the quirky effects and all the, you know, the pannings and all the blending between highs and low pitches. You know, like that's really was the inspiration from just saying, fuck it, there is no more rules, right? You know, whatever just sounds and feels tight, we're gonna run with that, you know what I'm saying? 100% feeling, that's why if you look at all our old music, you just say human music, there was no genre, it was just whatever made you feel like a human, that's what we were like striving for. Right, all vibes. I wanna ask uh, Fabian and Jason and then Ali if you wanna jump in too. Um, a lot of people here, a lot of people watching, streaming at the house, thank you for streaming by the way. Um, they want to know, like, what do you look for in the next potential, like, mentee or somebody that wants to get in the game? Like, do you look for work ethic? Do you look for technicality? Do you look for talent? Do you look for passion? Like, what are you looking for in somebody that potentially wants to work for you? How do they get your attention? Not, not like, oh, hit me up, email me, but I'm saying, who do you pay attention to and why? It, I mean, I have the hardest time, to be honest with you. Um, I haven't had an assistant in, in a long time. I, 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 I haven't found somebody that has the right work ethic. So that's my answer. You know, I don't have somebody, I work, I mean, I've been doing this 25 years. I, I still work 20 hour days. 
I just can't stop. I'm like, I'm a weirdo. When I'm on vacation, I'm up at 3 o'clock in the morning walking around the hotel, like, want to lose my mind. So I look for somebody that can hang, and I don't drink coffee. I don't nothing. I just look for somebody that can hang. I look for somebody that's got common sense. The rest is easy. I, I'd rather you not know anything. I can teach it all to you. I just want somebody that's got common sense and, and ambition and, and wants to be there. You know, that, that's what I really look for. And I haven't, <laughs> I haven't been able to find it. Maybe somebody's here. I don't know. Damn. <laughs> I'm fucking blown away. He said he had no fucking assistant. <laughs> I know. I know. Ollie's sitting over there like, Wait, what? I don't, man. Oh, yeah, man. Shit, I got about five I can throw yeah, at I you. Don't. <laughs> I don't. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm different. My all my assistants come from my assistants. So it's like you put in that grind for me for two years, or whatever the case may be. Give me one, man. And uh, <laughs> the 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 moral of the story is they choose my next assistant or who are the next person in the uh, rotation. And I came from the old school where I started out as a runner at Larrabee. So everyone who starts out has to start out as a runner. So it's kind of like you're getting educated by people who have done exactly what you've done and they can tell you how to do it the right way. So by the time you sit in the the main head engineer's uh, chair for me, you pretty much are my clone or my twin. So um, the only common denominator I can say between all the assistants is that they all had an incredible attention to detail. Attention to detail. And, you know, you see that when, you you know, I always used to talk shit like I was the best pillow, flip, fluffer, paws. I was the best runner slash food, plate your food, put the pepper and the salt on it. I was trying to do anything and everything so I can get recognized about the pe- people who can put put you on, right. you know, and I think that's that's the key. How do how do I get recognized by the p- certain people that can put me on? And what you do is you you humble yourself to a point where where they feel comfortable with having you around at all times. Right, Ali. I think. I think it's a little bit of both, man. Like, I, first and foremost, for me, I got to vibe with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I can't sit in a room six hours, you know what I'm saying, with somebody that I just, you know, I just I just can't fuck with. Um, but I tell, you know, a lot of my assistants and people that I, when I get asked that question, it's really primarily, you know, I want people that, you know, are working as hard as I am, right? Because I am crazy. I can imagine we all have a little bit of not knowing when to stop and creating more endeavors and not going home and doing all these things. So I need somebody to catch up, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I need somebody to be able to uh, 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 definitely understand the flow, but also wants to be bigger than me. You know, I want somebody with the with the with the inspir- with, the, with the the ability to be like, I want to be bigger than Ali, just like I wanted to be bigger than Dre, right? You know, you got to be able to have people that have aspirations and have dreams, and you know, because I was a dreamer, motherfuckers, I probably couldn't articulate that and what I was saying I was wanted at that time, but you know, I, I, again, I just want somebody who who uh, and I have that, you know, when it comes to the team that we've built. Um, are people that aspire to become the best, right? I'm not looking for, you know, any assistance or any talent to be around me that's already feeling like they're at the top of the game, right? I want people to feel like, yo, I don't know shit, you know, and you don't have to know shit, but you have to want to know everything, right? So I can, you know, teach you, just be teachable, uh, you know? So uh, w- one of the main things, again, is just making sure that you have just aspirations, you're dedicated to your craft, um, you know, you have patience, attention to detail, um, definitely, and if you know how to twist a blunt, that never, you know, that never not helps, you know. <laughs> twist a blunt. Yeah, uh, Wave, I want to ask you a quick question about uh, mentorship. We all know Ali. We've seen the photos of Ali in there with Dre, him getting tutelage for Fabian and, and Jason. You such a mystery. I've never seen, like, photos of you getting tutelage from or mentorship or game from other producers or reaching That's out. That's how it should be. He even created his own fucking sound. I want to know, has it, like, had, like, have you gotten any mentorship like over the years as a producer in the game? And then also maybe a gem or two that's been shared with you over the years. Um, all my mentors, things that I looked up to growing up was from a distance. Like I always tell the story the first time I understood production was Timberland. Um, first time I heard One in a Million, Aaliyah song, the stutter drums. I was like, wait, what is that? Because, you know, you hear a song as a kid, you like the song, all the catchy catchphrases, hooks, and all of that. But when I heard that and weird baby noises and all this other stuff, I'm like, oh, that's, that's production. 
And ever since then, I was like, oh, I, I don't want to, I don't have a plan B. I told my parents, if I don't make it as a producer doing this, I'm going to be living with them for the rest of my life. So, <laughs> I, so I always give Timberland. <laughs> I've never heard that. Timberland is my 1A of who inspired me to actually produce it. And my other one is Donald Bird, because my pops is a big jazz person. He used to just play all the greatest hits of Donald Bird's. And that's how I learned how to play drums, is studying his drummer, mimicking everything that he did to the point where I actually learn how to play drums. So those are my two that to, to this day, I will always big up. Have you, have you had any conversation with them? I recently talked to Tim. Um, bro, like his mind is still in a genius level of for him to be where he, what he did in the past and still is doing what he's doing. It's like, bro. Has anybody given you any advice that you still hold on to right now? Dr. Dre for sure. What, what did Dr. Dre tell you? I remember um, I was in the studio and I just specifically asked him, I said, um, it's like the most simplest thing ever too. I was like, bro, I'm having a, a, a beat block. Everybody has it. And he looked at me, he was like, step away from it. <laughs> I was like, come on, Dre. Like, Not everyone got a Billy Dre. Some, like, bro, like, <laughs> he's like, no, seriously, just take a break. Because when you're a kid, you just so caught up at the moment and just constantly trying to figure something out, find something new out. If you just step away from it for a second, come back to it, it's like you're just basically getting refreshed. And to this day, it's as simple as that. Just take a break. Yeah. I want to go. I think, I think that right there also applies to mixing too. Because like how many, how many times you, I know for sure I've dealt with it multiple times to where I could have just took a break and I would have went with 1.1, but I'm here at 2.8. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's, you know, it's good to take a step back. Rest your ears, you know, go get some inspiration. Go for a fucking walk, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, I know we got a million questions. I'm gonna get to that too, but um, I know one of them is gonna be go-to plugins, EQs, if y'all wanna talk about that, Fabian, uh, I, I always, Jason. I appreciate that question, but to me, it's what you do with it. You know what I'm saying? Like the guard part, we spoke about that, right? Like we're not gonna stroke Jason no more, but um, <laughs> That, I mean, I use it on every mix now, but, <laughs> but you know, my favorite, my favorite plugin is an EQ. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, to me, it's, it's, this, I could, well, Jason said it perfect. We could walk in a room, it could be four, it doesn't matter. I'm going to, I'm going to walk in with, give me, I learned years ago, um, we were working on a Mariah Carey song and, um, oh my God, I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now. Who's her engineer from Atlanta mixed all her records? Why can't I think about it right now? Phil Tan, Jesus, I'm sorry. Much respect to Phil. Phil Tan. Phil Tan is the one. Thank you, Jason. So, um, yo, I got the session and it had all Digirac plugins on it, and I, and I was like, wait a minute, this is it was this is Mariah, like it was all it was all of this stock Abbott stuff, right? And I was like, wow, it really blew my mind, and it made me realize like, I got this, I got that, I got ten million dollars worth of these things. All I need is an EQ, man. You know what I'm saying? All I need is a compressor. So, I always take the romance out of this. I'm sorry, but that's those are my favorite plugins. A compressor and an EQ, man. Which compressor? It doesn't matter. It doesn't Give me matter. Any, any of them, I'll, I'll smoke you. Give me any of them, man. You know what I'm no. no, he's lying. Any compressor. He's lying. I'm going to take a guess. Go ahead. Of mine? Of your compressor, favorite compressor, because it's mine. Go ahead. Our compressor. Oh, man. You're right. <laughs> such a jerk. Hey, How about the RDSer? It's incredible. Hey, we old school, baby. Vintage <laughs> plug-in. It works. It compresses. I'm just saying. Like, it compresses. That's, no, but hey, that's, I can make that motherfucker dance. But that's my, that's my point. You all have the tools already, man. Like, you have the tools there. I okay, don't so they have the tools. What's the last record you mixed stock? The mix, mix, that mix what? Mixed with, no, with stock plug-ins. Uh, this is my, my buddy Jordan McGraw. It's a, rock, it's a pop rock album. It's coming out soon. It's pretty cool. And it was recorded really well. And, I, and I, we literally just used the stock plugins. Where? Yeah. No, and that was like two weeks ago. No analog? No, no that was straight up stock plugins, man. Damn. And it was, and it was, a mis and it was funny. It was a mistake. I, had <laughs> I forgot my eye lock and I didn't have the zero downtime thing and all that. So I literally had no gear with me and just had to bang it out. And then it was fine. It worked out. Just knowing your tools, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I said, I mean, same, sure. thing, same thing, like what Dre was says, right? You know, you, asking them a similar question, you know, I always speak about this quote. It's like, it's not what you're working on, it's who's pressing the buttons, you right. know what I'm saying? And more importantly, it's like your room. Like, if you, if, you're, if you don't know your room, you could have every plugin in the world. You could have every piece of gear. If you don't know what you're hearing, your speakers, your room, that's the most important thing to me. 
Um, I, last thing, and then we'll get to some questions. Uh, I want to talk about Atmos real quick. Um, it's been a, a huge. It's amazing. Amazing. It's amazing. I bought a, I bought a new condo. I love Atmos. It's incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. Man. That's a lot of money. Will y'all follow Fabian <laughs> so he can stop flexing on stage? I'm just right? saying, like, <laughs> hey, check me out, baby. Come to Miami. <laughs> Atmos is the best, man. Um, mixing in Atmos, obviously, is a, a huge thing. But mm -hmm. um, I just want to talk about, as far as going back, though, like, going back and looking at certain mixes that you've done that aren't necessarily mixed in Atmos, what would be the one song that you would probably go back and mix in Atmos at this point? <laughs> Yo, you want to, you know what's funny? Yo, I got to hear man, this. Matty, so we got it. I got to hear this. Yo, shit. listen, they were all done, just so you know. They were all, I don't have one. I'm sorry, I keep ruining your question. I don't have one. They're all done. The entire catalog's been mixed in Atmos. Oh, excuse the fuck <laughs> out of sorry, me. Sorry, man. man. Sugar, just shout out Maddie Rich back there. <laughs> Spatial Mafia, we in the house. We, this is what we do around here. Jay got a plug. We got a plug now, too. So, yo, we, every single Maddie. song I've ever mixed is, is actually out in Atmos. Okay, bet. Yeah. You already, you all cut up. Yeah. <laughs> so you all caught up. 7,000 of them motherfuckers. But anyway, good luck, man. No? Well, uh, what was the question? You asked me the same question? Yeah. Same thing? Uh, I hate it. You hate that most. Really? I hate it. I would okay. think you would love it, man. Well, I love the paycheck that it provides yes. my staff. No, but I'm saying you don't like But, like, I truly, it was, like, a PPP loan for engineers. Yeah. It changed everybody's trajectory who, who, who became at most. But if you're asking me, do I like what Atmos sounds like now compared to one of my stereo mixes, I would not change a stereo mix for an Atmos really? mix ever. Okay. Clap it up for everybody up here and everybody hey. that's been here all weekend. Um, I want to thank Ali, the whole engineers team. If you don't know what engineers is, go to engineers.com. You can scan the QR code on the side of the building. Fabian, Jason, Soundwave, Mixed right. by Ali. My name is DJ right. Head. We thank y'all, and we couldn't be more blessed to be here with y'all. Appreciate y'all. See y'all next year. Yeah, real quick, I wanted to just, uh, just obviously give my brother some flowers, man. You know, the inspiration I got from everybody on the stage, right, you know, has got us to this point to, you know, building and doing things outside the box, man. So, you know, I hope from every conversation we've had on the stage all weekend, um, I hope, you know, you've been inspired to, you know, get to work on Monday um, and reach for the fucking stars, you know what I'm saying? So shout out to y'all, shout out to my brothers, Jason, Fabian, Soundwave, Head, I love you. Uh, Engineers.com, sign up, get your mixes, fuck with your boy.